To do a trabectome procedure, there's really three things we need. The first thing is the equipment system. The second is what's called a gonio lens. And the third is the disposables, which we have in a procedure pack. And let's go through each of those items. The equipment system actually consists of two pieces of equipment on a roller stand. The upper is an irrigation aspiration pump. The lower is the electrosurgical generator for the tissue ablation. So in the morning when you go to set up the equipment, you'll see that there's actually two plugs to plug into the wall to plug in each piece of equipment. Now when you plug in the irrigation aspiration pump, you'll see that the little power light comes on. It's ready to go. It's all powered up. But for safety reasons, the electrosurgical generator also has a power switch. So we want to make sure, in addition to plugging in the generator, that we go ahead and turn on the power here on the side. And we can tell that the power is on because the display lights up. And on the generator, there's really only one control. It, it's just the adjustment of the output power that's delivered from the generator. And that's just adjusted here with the knob. And you'll see that the adjustment to 0.8 watts is where we're going to leave the generator. That's the most typical setting for trabectome surgery. So it's a very low power procedure and that's simply adjusted here with the uh, knob on the generator. The upper unit is the irrigation aspiration console and it only has one adjustment also. Very simple to operate. You'll see the different positions for this knob. Right now we're in standby and nothing's happening. There's a prime setting. What prime is, is it turns on the irrigation aspiration. We're going to use that just to prime the handpiece, get it ready for surgery. And then for surgery, there's four different modes. They're marked flow one through four. And it's really easy to remember for surgical setting a trabectome, we usually use flow three, which is basically just straight up, so it's very easy to remember. And this basically stands for one to four milliliters per minute, these different flow settings. So unlike cataract surgery where there's a very high flow through the eye. With uh, trabectome where you have a very gentle flow of only about three mils a minute, what we just want is a nice stable environment during the surgery with a, just a little bit of outflow. Irrigation is just provided uh, as it would be with cataract surgery from a bottle of BSS that's elevated to pressurize the eye. And uh, if you look at the pole, the maximum height the pole will actually stop and some surgeons actually like to operate at a very high bottle height because it just pressurizes the anterior chamber during the procedure. But the most common setting is to set the bottle height about three quarters, which is, and this is about 80 to 100 centimeters of bottle height. That's very typical for the trabectome procedure. So that gives a nice pressurization of the anterior chamber, the gentle outflow of about three mils a minute, and a surgical energy setting of about 0.8 watts. So those are the typical settings for the equipment system. The second item I mentioned is a gonio lens, and this is basically used during the trabectome procedure because when the surgeon's going to operate in the eye, it's similar to pediatric surgery, for those of you familiar with uh, pediatric angle surgery, the doctor needs to be able to look and adjust the microscope view right into the angle of the eye where they're going to be working. And that's accomplished by looking through the surgical microscope and placing the gonio lens on the cornea, which directs that microscope view right into the nasal angle of the eye during the actual procedure. And one thing to note is the gonio lenses are marked left and right, and it sometimes can be confusing, but it's not because the patient's eye is a left or right eye being operated on, but it's if the doctor is right or left-handed. And just to make things a little more confusing, if the doctor is right-handed, they use a <laughs> left lens. So don't let that confuse you. Um, by far most surgeons are right-handed and the convention is it's called a left lens because they hold it in their left hand while they do their surgery with their right hand. So if you have both right and, and left-handed uh, surgeons, we'll just have to make sure that we uh, have the proper gonio lens prepped and ready for surgery. Now this um, needs to be sterile for each case and that can be autoclaved. Um, that's the most common way of sterilizing and prepping the lens for each procedure. If your facility allows, that can be flashed between cases, so it can be uh, processed very rapidly if you have back-to-back -back surgeries. And that's the, the gonio lens. And then the final item that we'll be working with is what we call the procedure pack. And what's nice about the procedure pack is it provides the disposables for the uh, 
tubectome procedure. We need one of these for each patient being treated. And what's nice is how complete the kit is. It includes uh, the keratome, which is a knife made uh, that's 1.8 millimeters for making the clear corneal incision. It's disposable and included in the kit. There's the draping system for the equipment. There's the tubing set for the irrigation aspiration. There's the handpiece itself. And the final item is a little irrigation aspiration cannula. We can use this at the end of the procedure to hook up to the equipment, just do a nice little wash out of the eye at the end of the procedure. And we'll be going through the use of each of these uh, items as we go through the setup. So when we're ready to set uh, up the equipment for surgery, we go through a certain number of steps and we'll go ahead and walk through those now. So in the sterile field, we would uh, make available the various items from the uh, procedure pack. If you're scrubbed in, the first item you would work with is the sterile drape. When you open the sterile drape, you'll see that there's a large and a small drape. We can set the small drape aside for now. But what we're going to do, as you do commonly for a lot of your equipment, is we're just going to use the larger drape. to drape the tray on. And we'll make a nice little pocket here to work with. The next item we'll work with, uh, if you're scrubbed in, uh, is the tubing set. So what we'll want to do is we'll place the tubing set on the tray, we'll release the bands, and we want to keep as much of this in the sterile field as we can, but if we start with the bottle spike and we kind of go backwards, we'll get to the little collection bag. These are the items that are going to be mounted onto the irrigation aspiration pump. So whoever's scrubbed in can hand this off to whoever's circulating so that they can go ahead and set up the pump. So we'll keep as much of this on the sterile field. And to set up the pump is really pretty simple. There's a simple roller pump for aspiration. The little collection bag just goes on these little pins. And we just want to put the bag on so that the pump tube is heading toward the pump. We don't want to put it on so it's going the other way. So just go ahead and pop the little collection bag on here with the tube going toward the pump. With the pump open, you can see the little pump rollers. We're going to just lay that pump tubing right across the rollers. And I'll move it to this view so you can see. We can put just a little tension on that pump tubing and close the pump. And the aspiration is all set up and ready to go. The only thing I want to point out is if you go to close the pump and you don't see this little fitting, it means there's something wrong. It probably means the tubing's behind the rollers are just not properly positioned. So go ahead and open it up. Just lay it right across the middle of those rollers, the pump tubing. Just stretch a little bit so when you close it, the little fitting should be showing just like this and it's all ready to go. Now for irrigation, we mentioned that irrigation is provided by a plain bottle of BSS. And so what we're going to do so we can control the priming of the tubing is we're going to close this little roller clamp so that the tubing shut off. We can go ahead and spike our bottle. And then one of the critical steps to get the BSS to flow through the tubing is you'll see there's a little air vent, the little red cap. We've got to make sure that we pop that open. If we don't open the air vent into the bottle, you'll just notice that now the fluid wants to flow. So don't let that confuse you if it happens. Just remember to open the air vent, and then you'll get the flow of the fluid. And then the final step is that we need to control the irrigation flow to the handpiece. It's coming from the bottle. So if we start with the bottle spike and go down the tubing set, you'll see that we'll get to this little piece of soft, stretchy tubing. This is where we're going to turn the irrigation on and off. And that's going to happen right here in this little slot. And that's where a little pinch valve actually just pinches this tubing open and closed to turn it on and off the irrigation. Now, when this light is off, that means the irrigation is off. When this little blue light's on, the irrigation is flowing, meaning it's open. And the light turns on and off. You'll just see that that little tubing's being uh, pinched open and closed to turn on and off the irrigation flow from the bottle. So that completes the setup of the pump tubing. Now, while the circulator is setting up the pump, whoever scrubbed in can go ahead and be preparing the handpiece. And the trabecum handpiece actually looks like this. It's got the bipolar electrosurgical leads as well as the fluidic pigtails for the flow of fluid in and out of the eye. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the bands off the 
handpiece. And as you can imagine, the little tip of this device is very, very delicate. The model I showed you is actually sized to fit the anatomy of the eye. So even though this large tip shows the features, some of these features are really the size of just a couple human hairs. So this is a very, very small and delicate tip in reality. And so we, we want to be very careful not to damage that tip. So when we pack the handpiece, we protect it very well with a cap. And during the setup and handling of the handpiece, we never need to remove the cap. So we're just going to leave the cap on until we're all ready to use it in surgery. So we'll just put the handpiece tip down. We can go ahead and plug the bipolar electrosurgery into the generator. You'll see there's two receptacles here for the bipolar. We just want to make sure we plug those completely in. And it, it doesn't matter which plug goes in which receptacle. We just want to make sure both are inserted completely. And now we're ready to prime the handpiece. Now, with a lot of the equipment you use, there's different approaches. Some equipment, we tend to put the irrigation aspiration lines together and prime. Other equipment, we tend to connect the handpiece and run the prime that way. But with our particular um, trabectome system, I mentioned that the fluid flow is very low and gentle. So the way I recommend that you set up and prime the system is start by not connecting anything. So we're just not going to connect the handpiece at all. We're going to leave this completely disconnected. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and turn on the prime, which opens the irrigation flow. Remember, we have our clamp closed. We can open our clamp and we'll start the flow of the BSS. We can raise the bottle a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're just going to flush the irrigation line really good. Make sure all the bubbles and the fluid just flows out the irrigation line. And that will happen very quickly if we don't connect the handpiece. So at this point, we'll just check, make sure the bubbles are flushed out. We'll have irrigation flowing um, from the tube. And then we can go ahead and turn off to standby. That'll stop the flow of fluid. Then we can just go ahead and connect the handpiece. And you'll notice that it only connects one way because of the male and female fittings. There's only one way we can connect it. We'll just leave the tip down in the pouch. And we'll go ahead and go back to prime. And all we do is just let the system run. What will happen is, the irrigation will continue to flow into the cap. When the tip's submerged, the pump will aspirate through the aspiration line and we'll start seeing it drip into the collection bag. So when we see it start dripping in the collection bag, we can just do a quick visual check. At that point, we shouldn't see any bubbles in the line. If we do, we can just let the primer run longer. But once it's dripping, we don't see any bubbles in the line. We can go ahead and go to surgical mode, flow three, and we're all set for surgery. So flow three, a fairly high bottle height. It doesn't matter exactly what the bottle height is, but just an elevated bottle to get a nice pressurization of the eye. And 0 0.8 watts, flow three. And we're all set for surgery. Now, when we're in surgical mode, one thing that can be a little confusing is how the foot pedal works. Because when the surgeon is going to use the handpiece, the foot pedal has the following functions. When they press on the top button, it turns on the continuous irrigation, and that's left on during the entire surgery to irrigate the eye. Then as the surgeon steps down on the handpiece, it adds aspiration, and then you'll hear the tone. The tone is actually the firing of the electrosurgery during the ablation uh, portion of the procedure. Now, this toggling on and off of the irrigation flow leaves the pump in either the on or off position for irrigation. So, don't let that confuse you. If you in the morning, you're setting up for surgery, and you prime the handpiece, and then you go to surgery mode, and this is already on, don't let that confuse you. It's just because the foot pedal has been left in the continuous irrigation mode. Just go ahead and toggle that off, and you're all ready to go. So, in surgery mode, the irrigation can be either on or off, just depending on how the foot pedal has been left before. And we just want to go ahead and toggle it off so we're ready for surgery. Let's uh, just walk really quickly through the surgical procedure in case you're scrubbed in or supporting the surgery. Um, it's, it's a very minimally invasive surgery. It typically takes about 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, the way the surgery goes is one thing that's a little unique is this is angle surgery. So one of the first things you'll see is that the doctor is going to adjust the surgical microscope. They're sitting temporal, 
and they want a good view into the angle of the eye. So what they're going to do is they're going to first tilt the microscope so that they get a nice view into the angle of the eye. Then they're also going to tilt the patient's head away to even get a better view. So what you'll see is an adjustment of the microscope and for these patients, we don't want to tape the head down as we do in some surgeries because we're actually going to be turning the patient's head. So we'll see the doctor set up, get the angles adjusted, and probably ask for the gonial lens. They may very likely just place the gonial lens and make sure that all the angles have been established so that they can see the anatomy nicely before they get started. Then uh, for the procedure, what they'll do is they'll make the clear corneal incision, 1.8 millimeters. Um, then they're ready to use the trabectome handpiece. And if you're scrubbed in, we mentioned that the tip is really delicate, but when it's time to actually use the handpiece in the surgical field, the cap can be removed as follows. And it's very important to remove the cap without damaging the tip. And the trick to that is simply grab the cap and the handpiece. You don't need to pull on the cap, just twist. And when you twist, you'll see there's a little ramp and you hear a little click. When you hear that click, the cap completely releases and we can remove it without touching anything. So. We really want to avoid pushing the cap off to the side or scraping the cap along the plastic or touching the tip to anything. What we want to do is just twist to open, carefully remove it without touching anything, and hand it on and off of the surgical field again without the tip really touching anything. You can imagine if the tip snags a drape, what happens is, if we go back to our model, this delicate little tip will snag and it'll actually bend uh, the tip and then we have to replace the handpiece because it's no longer functional. So if we're careful in how we handle the uh, handpiece, that's really no problem at all. We just want to be careful not to uh, snag the tip on anything. So when the doctor's ready to start the surgery, they'll take the trabectome in one hand and the gonio lens. And what they'll do is they'll turn on the continuous irrigation. They'll enter the incision. They'll go across the anterior chamber of the eye until the tip's approaching the nasal angle. At that point, you'll see them place the lens and direct the view right into the angle of the eye. What I'll do here is I'll switch over to my little model. So what they've done is they've come temporally into this uh, nasal part of the eye. What they're gonna do is place the tip right in the Schlem's canal. Then you'll hear them go down on the foot pedal. And when you hear the tone, they're firing the electrosurgery and moving along Schlem's canal. What they'll do is they'll come in from the incision and go one direction. And usually they can open up about 60 to 90 degrees in one direction. Then they'll come back to the center, reverse, start off where they left off and typically extend. And we can usually do about 90 to 120 degrees of the opening of this trabecular meshwork in the nasal sector. And that's sufficient to expose a lot of these collector channels and reestablish the outflow in the eye. So once the ablation is completed, the surgeon will withdraw the handpiece from the eye. And if this is a standalone trabectome case, oftentimes the surgeon will want to go back in and just do a little wash out of the anterior chamber, particularly if there's any residual viscoelastic in the eye, because we don't want that to move into the collector channels and cause the pressure to actually rise after surgery. And so that's where we would use the little irrigation aspiration cannula, which we have in our little kit. It's basically a modified Simcoe. And again, what we do is we just disconnect the handpiece and set it aside so that we can connect the little IA cannula to the fluidic set. Again, it only connects one way and there's no priming or anything that needs to be done. What the surgeon will do is they can insert this little IA cannula right through the same incision and then they can use the foot pedal to do a nice little wash out of the anterior chamber to clear the eye of any residual visco. And the other thing you'll often see in this surgery is that you'll see a little blood enter the eye. And for most eye surgeries, seeing blood in the eye is um, not something <laughs> very positive. But in this particular procedure, it's actually very typical. And so when the surgeon opens trabecular meshwork, some blood oftentimes comes into the eye, not because they're cutting tissue that bleeds, but once they've opened up this communication to the venous circulation, when the pressure in the eye drops, oftentimes a little blood will reflux from the venous circulation back into the eye. And actually in trabectome procedures, we, most surgeons like to see a little blood come back in the eye because what it does is it confirms that they've opened up 
the tissue and establishes communication of the fluid between the anterior chamber and the vascular circulation. So in this procedure, it's very typical to see a little blood reflux coming into the eye. Sometimes that's washed out, but oftentimes we'll close the patient with a little bit of uh, uh, blood in the eye, but that resolves very quickly post-operative and doesn't cause any real issues. It just resolves and goes away in the course of a day or so. And cleanup of the trabectome is very simple because everything's disposable. Basically, it's just the reverse of setting things up. And what we do is we can just go ahead and remove our, the items from the pump. The handpiece, everything's single use. Most uh, hospitals will consider this a sharp, the easiest way to dispose of it. Just go ahead and cut off uh, the cord. Just take the whole handpiece and you can toss it into your sharps at disposal. However you, um, at your facility, dispose of bottle spikes as appropriate. And then you basically can just take and remove everything and uh, we're all cleaned up and ready for the next patient. So it's a very simple system to break down and to uh, be ready for the next surgery. One thing I'd like to mention, because it's always helpful, is to discuss briefly the things that most often can go wrong. And our experience in working with the system is that it's a pretty simple system to set up and operate. It's pretty intuitive, um, much simpler than a lot of the equipment I'm sure that you normally work with. It can be very complex. But when we're setting up the fluidics, as you recall, we get to the step where we're going to put the irrigation in the slot, and that's where we're going to turn the irrigation on and off. And the most common setup problem is just not getting that tubing inserted properly into the slot. So what happens is if it doesn't get in the slot, you can imagine basically it's just never turning off because it's never being pinched closed. So, as you recall, what we normally do is we turn on the valve, we're going to pop that tube in, we're going to turn this off after we flush the irrigation line, and then we're going to connect to the handpiece. When we go to flush the irrigation line and connect to the handpiece, when we turn this off to connect the handpiece, we should see the fluid stop flowing, the irrigation, if this is properly inserted. However, if we go to connect the handpiece, we turn this off and we get ready to connect the handpiece and it just keeps flowing, don't let that be an issue. All it means is that this hasn't really been inserted properly. So just go ahead and turn on the light, readjust this, try again and that should solve the problem. This should turn off. We go ahead and connect our handpiece and finish the prime. So that's the most common uh, issue with setting up where sometimes the tube isn't inserted and we'll see that the irrigation doesn't fully shut off. Other than that, it's really quite straightforward and easy to, uh, to set up and prepare for surgery. And I think you'll find that after you've used the equipment just a couple times, you feel very comfortable with how simple it is to set up and, and have ready for surgery.